see my screen right now. Give me a thumbs up, please, if you can see the screen. Thank you. And we're going to go ahead and get started. What did we do last time? Tell me what we did last time. We finished the test, didn't we? Mm, I think we just worked part of it uh -huh. again. Huh? We just worked on part of the chapter three. Test. Yeah, we worked on the last part of the test. So. All right, so this is two sections. I've already covered a lot of it, so it ain't like it's new material. Um, in fact, stuff that I've already shown you. Okay, I'm gonna let you write this down because, and I'm gonna write it down on the whiteboard. When you have a function, f of x is equal to a to the n, dot, 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 plus a to the n minus one, dot, 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 down to a to the o, okay? This is called a polynomial. In other words, it's more than a trinomial, it's more than a binomial, it's a polynomial. And the polynomial basically has a nth degree, which means this is the degree. The n is the degree, the highest one. And the leading coefficient goes with the highest degree, whatever that coefficient is. So, and that's what they're talking about right here. So, I don't know who that is, but I don't recognize the numbers, so I'm not going to worry about it. Let me turn on my whiteboard here so I can do some things right quick. Where is my whiteboard? Oh, yeah, they don't have it on here, so I got to use my Hubert whiteboard. There it is. And there we go. And I'm going to take my handy dandy highlighter and make sure it's translucent. And this guy right here is your leading. Remember, my mouse doesn't work right with this whiteboard. I have to highlight it and I have to hit click it there. That A right there is your leading coefficient, and it goes with the degree. So if I have 5x to the fifth power, then I've got a fifth degree polynomial with a leading coefficient of 5, 5x to the fifth. Okay, so that takes care of the leading coefficient. That's, that's that guy right there. And... The degree, I don't know if it says degree. There's the degree right there. And this is also the y-intercept, which I already told you that when we did completing the square. So your last number right there is going to be the y-intercept. Um, the only other thing I want to mention, mention is that when n is odd, you've got it going through the origin or or it's symmetrical around the origin, and when you have an even, it is symmetrical around the y-axis. So when n is even, it's going to be some kind of symmetrical around the y-axis. When n is odd, it is symmetrical around the origin. Okay, so that's kind of a little, little bit before we get started. So let me move on. Here we go, ending behavior. This is called ending behavior. I'm just going to do the whiteboard. When you're talking about ending behavior, if I have x to the even power, then my graph is going to look like this. Or if it's negative, it's going to look like this. In other words, 
my parabola will be going the what? Same direction. So Indian behavior for an even function, that's x to the second, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the eighth, and so on. We'll have your ending behavior will be going in the same direction. If it's positive, it will be going in the upward direction. If it's negative, it will be going in the downward direction. But the thing is, when it's even, they're both going in the same direction either positive or negative. With an odd function, <clears throat> x to the fifth, x to the third, x to the fifth, x to the seventh, so on, you go, Indian behavior is opposite direction. That's positive. Opposite direction. This is negative. So you need to look for that. You know, when I look at a problem on the test and I deduct and I say, which one is it not? This is where I get it from. So when you're talking about a positive cubic function, they're going to be going in opposite directions. When you're talking about a negative cubic function, they're going in opposite directions. Now, have we done two problems? Yeah, two test problems are on this page right here. I might ask you for a leading coefficient or the nth degree. They may mm -hmm. ask you which way is the graph going and just give you an x to the fifth or an x to the fourth. I don't know. Say again. You got a question? Somebody said, I don't know. Make sure you get your mute off and be talking to somebody else. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and that is what they're talking about on this page. These are cubic functions, opposite directions. Quadratics means even going in the same direction. And remember, the higher the even function and, and higher the odd function, the more squared off the saddle is going to be here, more, more in depth, and the more even this is going to be with the parabola, the more squared out that's going to be the higher the degree. So here's the x to the fourth function. You see it actually squaring off down here on the bottom. And I'm not going to inflection points. Local max, that's when it's going. Oh, I don't have my video on. Sorry. OK. If you're talking about <clears throat> turning points, okay, there's a graph. This is going to be your max, your vertex. This is going to be your min. It's also a vertex. And this is your max also. Now, since we've got two maxes, this one's called a local max. Like secondary, this is your max. So you got a primary and a secondary. And you got a min because I don't have another min. Inflection point. Inflection point is right in here. And right in here is where this one stops and this one starts. 
this one stops and this one starts. You're not going to be asked about inflection points, but that's what inflection point is. Turning point one, two, three. You got three turning points. So that means this is an X to the fourth function. X to the fourth. How do I know that? Because you're leading your degree minus one is how many turning points you have. And look, opposite direction. I mean, same direction, even function. Okay, so there's a little bit more. You might be asked this question. You might be asked for a turning point. You just take the leading degree, four, minus one is three. One, two, three turning points. It's always n minus one. Like I say, this is not going to be a hard test for you. There's a max, local max, min. Max, min. That's the test question. And you can find those on your calculator. Absolute, local. Absolute is your primary. Local is your secondary. You don't need to. I mean, you can write that down if you want to. But I, when you hear the word absolute max and absolute min, you should say to yourself, OK, that's the primary. And then the second one is local. How do you know which is which? Which one is the absolute and which one is the local? Look at it. Look at the look at the. How do I know which one's max? Which one's higher? Uh, okay. And which one's the lowest? OK, so if I have this. Let's say I have something like this. This is the max. This is the local max. This is the min. This is the local min. This is your primary min. This is your primary max. Everything else, once you list the primary, what is everything else? Secondary. It's kind of like real life. Once you once you have the president. Everything else is just what? Under the president. You know what I'm saying? Once you once you get the max and the min, everything else is local. I like to say primary and secondary, but that's just me. Okay. That's uh this is a local. This is a local min. This is your max. This is your min. This is primary min, primary max, local min. This is a max min. This is a max because you only got two. Hidden behavior. What is hidden behavior? Hidden behavior is when you look at your graph and you see this. But actually. When you blow it up. Looks like that. OK, be sure. When you graph something, especially the higher degrees. Usually X to the second is OK. X to the third is OK. X to the fourth and X to the fifth. When you start getting into X to the fourth plus X to the third plus X to the second plus X to the fourth plus X to the third and so on. When you start to get these right here, that's when you need to start worrying about the saddle 
or the hidden behavior. Okay, hidden behavior, you've got to blow up this area right here called the saddle. You got to blow that up and make sure you don't have a max and a what? A min or a local max and a local min. A lot of this is done on the calculator, a lot of it. So look at this one. When you blow that one up, you're going to see it has a max and a what? A min. Now, how do you find the max and the min? Well, I think I've already showed you that, but I get y'all mixed up with math 109, so I better go ahead and make sure. Take your calculator and let's punch it in. <clears throat> Let me minimize my calculator a little bit. Give me a second. Okay, I'm going to type in clear. I'm going to hit Y is equal x cubed x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 2 and graph and there it is so i'm going to zoom box I use box. You don't have to, but that's the easiest thing to use. Put a left hand corner right about there. Enter. Put a right hand corner right about there. Enter. And there is your max and your min. Now, how do you find it? Hit second, trace. Now, since I'm showing you the calculator, if you don't remember how to do it, you go to the video. And you rewind and rewind and rewind till you get it. Okay. Max. Give me a left hand guess or left hand parameter. Let's see, left hand would be right about there. Right hand would be right about there. Just tells the calculator where to look. And my guess is right about there. And there is my max, 0.33, negative 1.85. That's my max. Now I'm going to find my min. So second, trace, min. Left-hand side, right about there. Right hand side. Don't hold the button down. And my guess is right about there. One and negative two. That's how you find your max and your mins. Now, if you got two or three, then you got to look for two or three. That's a test question right there finding your max and your min. So after today, you go back to the video and you rewind and rewind and rewind until you know how to do calculator. And I just X out of the calculator, which I don't want to do. All right. That talks about the saddle flattening out and getting, I've already told you that. As this goes up, this flattens out. As it gets higher, that flattens out. Here's a test question right here. And I want you to write down, just write down the formulas or the equations. And for homework, you need to type them in the calculator. That's your homework. You need to learn how to, these are calculator drills. This whole unit, except for long division, chapter four, is calculator drills. 
So write down those four and make sure you can punch those in a calculator and make sure you can graph them. I'm going to leave those on the board so you can write them down. And you write down what they look like so you can make sure you're doing your calculator correctly. Because I'm talking to people that invented the calculator and I'm talking to people that don't even know how to turn them on. So I've got all kinds of people in this class. Sadly, most of y'all walk around with it like a basketball on your finger twirling it around, which is sad. You know, I have to say that the best drink ever created, besides Dr. Pepper, has got to be Mountain Dew. Got to be. Uh, this summer I worked in uh, landscaping. Uh -huh. and we so we did like we did uh, custom landscaping for all those fancy rich people up in like Thornblade at Greenville and stuff. <laughs> and yep. uh, and my boss had this. He would constantly drink Mountain Dew, and he called it liquid spinach. And yeah. he was Popeye. A lot of a lot of people. I tell you, I grew up on Mountain Dew. I grew up on it, and I love Dr Pepper. You know why I love Dr Pepper? I love the smell of Dr Pepper. Now, back when I was a kid, it used to have a real, real Dr Peppery smell, and now it's kind of not. It wasn't. Dr Pepper is not. It doesn't taste the way it tasted back when I was a kid. It tastes a little, it was strong when I was a kid. But it's still, it's still probably my second favorite drink besides Mountain Dew. My dad probably goes through about five Cokes a day. I can't, I can't do that. I drink one in the morning to get my caffeine. That's about it. The rest of the day, I drink Gatorade or water, depending on if it's cold or hot. In the hayfield, I take a, I take a big old bottle of frozen water, and it free unfreezes, and that's what I drink when I'm on the trackers. All right, write those down and make sure you can punch those in a calculator. Those four test questions right there, and they're going to ask for the max and the min. This is a min right here. This is a min. That might be a max right there. This is a max. This is a local max. I don't think that one has a max. That one just has a turn. So make sure those are four that you can play with right there. See, local min, or that's the min. It only has one min. This is a max. This is local max. This, no no max, just a turn. This one may be a min right here and a max right here. I think it is. That's kind of hidden behavior right there. You need to blow that up and look at it in your calculator. But let's also look at this. Let me hit backspace. Somebody tell me what the leading, a leading degree here is. Four, is four even or odd? Even. Even. Got two arrows going in the same what? Direction. Even or odd? Even. With a negative? Oh, yeah. Even. And they're going in the same direction. Even or odd? Odd. Opposite directions. Odd, negative, opposite directions. That's what I'm going to test you on mostly as far as non calculator work, being able to tell, you know, which way something is going just by looking at the degree. And I think y'all know this. One X intercept, two X intercepts, three X. I'm not going to insult your intelligence by saying this is one X intercept. This is two X intercepts. This is 3x intercepts. 
The way that you look, find it on your calculator is you hit second trace and you find the zeros. Second trace, find the zeros. We're going to do this one right here. Okay, so type in your calculator. These are all calculator questions. Y is equal to X to the third plus 5X squared plus 5X second insert 5 minus 2 graph zoom standard zoom 6 no, learn how to use that zoom i'm going to zoom window sorry zoom box and i'm going to go and put the left hand corner over here enter and the right hand corner Always include the y-intercepts, the x-intercepts, and the max and the min. Always. Enter. And I'm going to find this x-intercept right here. To hit second, trace, zero, which means x-intercept. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to put the left-hand side. The left and the right hand side tells the calculator where to look. Right hand side be right there. And the guess tells it to narrow it down to this area right here. And there is your X intercept. So write that down, negative 3.3 .3 and zero. And now I want you to find this middle one here. Second, trace, zero. Find the middle one. Somebody give me a thumbs up when you found it so I know one or two people. Okay, I got one. Somebody give me another one. I know some of y'all aren't even doing it, but I don't know why, but somebody give me another thumbs up when you got it. Howard Stern Osborne, I can't see nothing but a silhouette, so Mr. Osborne's being Howard Stern this morning. Somebody give me a thumbs up when they got they got one thumbs up. Anybody got another one? Okay, I guess y'all are not doing it, so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. My second one is negative two, zero. My third, second, I'm sorry, trace, zero. I'm going to go over to this guy over here. And don't hold the button down. There's the left. There's the right. Okay, computer, we're looking in here, and I want you to look right in here for the answer. And there, point three, is your three x-intercepts. That's the test question, what I just did. How to find the x-intercepts. How to find the max and the min, and how to find the x-intercepts. Now, I'm not going to go through domain and range, especially after we've been through. I mean, if it's got errors on it, chances are it's all real numbers. Okay, this one is all real numbers because there's no fraction. There's no rational. It's all whole numbers. X to the fifth, you plug in a two, you get 32. There's nothing wrong with that. If it's a radical or a rational or a logarithm or a trigonometric function, the domain is affected. If it's just X to the fifth, X to the fourth, X to the third, you can plug anything you want to in there. How do you find the range? You graph it and you find the vertex. And that Y up or Y down is your, so let's do this one. Uh, 
Oh, it's just long. It's taking a long time to punch it in. Let's just let me just show you. It's easier for me to draw it than it is to go through all. When you're doing a mouse, punch it into a calculator, it takes longer. So let's say this is your function right here. We've got arrowheads over it. There's no vertical asymptotes. There's nothing like that. So there's no open circles. So the domain is all real numbers. The range, let's say this is negative, negative one, negative five. That's your min. Then my range is going to be from negative five to infinity. You always go with the y of your min or the y of the max. And y'all know that from completing the square. We always went from the min y up or the min x or the min y or the max y down. Okay, so either you're going to go range from the min y up or if it's, if it's concave down, you go from the min y or the max y down. That's always going to be your range. And right now, y'all should be going, yeah, I remember doing that from completing the square. Finding, 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 finding. Finding, I'm not going to ask about that. Okay, can you fit the model? Okay, I'm going. Let me go ahead and get the long division right quick because I'm running out of time and I want to make sure everybody gets to long division as soon as I can find it, please. Hold on. There we go. Because long division is the other thing I'm going to test you on besides. Okay, I'm not, that's not, that's squeeze theorem. I really don't care about that. There's long division. Okay. Long division. There's only one thing that you got to remember with long division. Does anybody know what the secret is to long division? Anybody was taught the secret or you always been confused with it? Come on, somebody tell me one of the two. Always been confused. I guess always been confused. Say again. Always been confused. Always been confused. Anybody else? I heard somebody else say something. I said the same thing. Okay, well, I'm going to give you something to remember. Do first. All place values must be accounted for. Okay. Let's say I want to take x squared plus 6 and I want to divide it by x minus 1. Okay, I got to set this up. What is the degree of the top? The degree of the top is 2. The degree of the bottom is one. So I'm going to set this up. X squared plus zero X to the first plus six X to the zero. X to the first minus one X to the zero. Now, what I just did is I just made sure that all the place values were accounted for. Does everybody agree that this is x squared plus 6, which is x squared plus 6x to the 0? What's missing? 2, 0. What's missing? 1. So you got to put in 
x to the first. Some people do it as a space. Some people do it as zero. I don't care as long as it's taken, it's accounted for. You have to account for any missing values. This is the leading term. You got to have two, one, zero. This is the leading term for the denominator. You got to have one and zero. There's nothing missing here. So you just, you just write it down. You've got something missing here, and that's where you got to put this in. That's the number one rule of long division. Now, you just rewrite it. X minus one into X squared plus zero X plus six. I just wrote it in normal terms. And now I worry about this guy. This guy is my kite. And this is my what? That's my tail. All you worry about is the kite. You only worry about the kite. So I'm going to put kite in pink. The kite is all you worry about because the tail will follow. So how many times will X now remember your exponential laws here. Don't say twice because that's not right. How many times will X to the first go into X to the second? X to the what? One. X to the one. X to the one times X to the one is X squared. Then put X to the zero right here if you want to. X times negative one X to the zero is negative one X to the first. And now you always subtract. Now, if you want to forget your exponential laws here, then that's one way to be confused. One plus zero is one. The first one always cancels out because you subtract. That makes this a positive. This always goes out. And what is 0x plus 1x? 1x. And the 6 comes down to help out. And how many times will x go into 1x? One time. I didn't, yeah, one time. And 1 times x is 1x. And 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. You always subtract. That makes this a negative and this a positive. This goes out. And you have 7 as a remainder. That's how, that's the proper way to do long division. So I'm going to highlight this guy right here in yellow because I had to put him in there. Now a lot of people say, well, why don't you use a negative? You can use whatever you want to. Somebody tell me what the difference in negative zero and positive zero is. And that's what I thought. There's no difference. So it doesn't matter whether you put a negative there or positive there. It's zero. You got seven minutes. I want to do another one. Okay, so let's do. I'm just going to write it and I want you to set it up and do it if you want to. 2x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 6x minus 1 divided by x squared plus 2. All right, I want you to set this one up. Long division. And I want you to work on it for one minute because I don't have very much time left.
All right, I'm going to set it up. Let's see, this is to the fourth power. So we need four, three, two, one, zero. So we're missing a term. So that's going to be two X to the fourth plus zero X to the third minus three X squared plus six X to the first minus one X to the zero. Now I'm putting all those X's and zeros and stuff so you can see four, three, two, one, zero. All my places are accounted for here. Now what? Now we got to check the other guy. The divisor, we got to check it. X squared, we don't have X to the zero. I mean, X to the one. We've got X to the zero, but we don't have X to the one. So X squared plus zero X to the first plus two X to the zero. Now we're ready to divide. And where's our kite? Our kite is right there. And this is our tail, and our tail will follow. All we got to worry about is the kite. So I'm going to highlight this guy. And how many times, be careful, how many times will x squared go into 2x to the fourth? Is it 2x squared? Good job. 2x squared. 2x squared times x squared is 2x to the fourth. 2x squared times 0x is 0x to the third. 2x squared times 2 is 4x squared. And we always what? You always subtract. That makes this guy a negative. Makes this guy a negative. It makes this guy a negative. Well, these cancel. Zero plus zero is zero x to the third. Negative seven x squared plus six x. How many times will x squared go into zero x cubed? 0x to the first, 0 plus 0, and 0 times 2 is 0x to the first. You always subtract. That's going to make this a negative, makes this a negative, makes this a negative. Of course, you're just subtracting zero. So that's negative seven X squared plus six X. And then minus one X to the zero comes down to help out. Now somebody tell me how many times X squared will go into negative seven X squared. Seven. What kind of seven? Negative. negative. Negative seven times X squared is negative seven X squared. Negative seven times zero X is zero X. Negative seven times two is negative 14 X to the zero. Always subtract. That makes this a positive, makes this a negative, makes this a positive. This goes out like it's supposed to. 6x, six, 6 minus 0 is 6x, and negative 1 plus 14 is 13. So that's our remainder, and that's how you do long division. So your answer is 2x squared minus 7 times with a remainder of 6x plus 13. Now you shouldn't be confused.
Let me ask you, those two people that were confused, are you as confused now? No, not at all. You forgot to follow two things. What do you got to follow? One, you got to make sure that all place values are accounted for. Two, you got to make sure that you worry about this guy. You don't worry about trying to divide this into that. You worry about this guy. How many times will that one go into this one? That one go into this one? That one go into this one? And the rest of it will follow. Okay, your homework this weekend is to work on the homework and the test. Do not work on the test until you're good with the homework. I'll extend the test probably another day or two next week. But I have to put some kind of burner under you so you won't gaff off the weekend. So make sure you get the homework done and questions sent in Monday, OK? And Mr. Blackwell was here. Let's go ahead and shut down the recording and I'll take the roll so y'all don't get dropped.